Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 199. Now thank we all our God with grateful hearts and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom the world rejoices, who from the days of yore hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Hymn number 199. The scriptural this morning will be given by Elsie from Alabama. Psalms. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O oh God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science Textbook.
our Father, who is in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 390. Why is thy faith in God's great love so small? Why doth thy heart shrink back at duty's call? Art thou obeying this? Abide in me. And doth the Master's word abide in thee? Hymn number 390.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can also catch it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children here. It meets at 11 a.m. every Sunday. And that Sunday school is available for children anywhere in the world because it has its own teleconference number. So if you have a child of Sunday school age and you don't live in the area, please call us. We'll give you the number and we'll be glad to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery for infants and toddlers at all of our services. And let's see, our next Bible study session will be held this coming Saturday, October 10. So uh, check the website for the study questions. And please join us this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. You'll be glad you did. And we've been busy printing and mailing. The forum, latest issue of Forum Highlights has been printed and put in the mail to subscribers. All of our websites, and we have several in several different languages, are offered free of charge to the public. Everything we have is offered free of charge to the public. And that is why we appreciate all of your contributions, financial and otherwise, that's what makes this happen. So we are very grateful to all of you who contribute to this great cause. One of the articles uh, that's featured on the cover page of our website is one I'd like to recommend, uh, an article by Gilbert Carpenter entitled, The Fruit of Right Thinking really good article, so I recommend it highly if you haven't read it already. And everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And a special welcome to Peter from California <laughs> this morning. Now we will have the reading of a testimony from Miscellaneous Writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Susan from Massachusetts. Page 411. I was a helpless sufferer in August 1883 and had been so for many years. The physician said I had cancer of the uterus. I heard of your book, Science and Health, with key to the scriptures, bought a copy, began reading it, and a great light seemed to break through the darkness. I cried aloud in joy, this is what I have been hungering for these many years. I studied it closely and healed myself and several of my friends before I had taken instruction of any teacher. Mrs. S. A. McMahon, Wyandot, Kansas. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page two of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. <clears throat> Subject, unreality. The golden text is from 1 Corinthians. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The responsive reading is from Romans and Ephesians. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses 
contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Fairly from Maryland will now read. The Holy Bible. James. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, which whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. 1 Kings, and it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal... Then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your God, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! 
but there was no voice, nor any that answered. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Jeremiah, through deceit, they refused to know me, says the Lord. Second Thessalonians, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Matthew. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound... The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Amanda from Missouri will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. All reality is in God and His creation, harmonious and eternal. That which He creates is good, and He makes all that is made. To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. Spirit, life, truth, 
love, combine as one, and are the scriptural names for God. All substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause and effect belong to God. These are his attributes, the eternal manifestations of the infinite divine principle, love. No wisdom is wise but his wisdom. No truth is true. No love is lovely. No life is life but the divine. No good is but the good God bestows. Divine metaphysics, as revealed to spiritual understanding, shows clearly that all is mind, and that mind is God, omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience, that is, all power, all presence, all science. Hence all is in reality the manifestation of mind. Matter and its claims of sin, sickness, and death are contrary to God and cannot emanate from Him. There is no material truth. The physical senses can take no cognizance of God and spiritual truth. Human belief has sought out many inventions, but not one of them can solve the problem of being without the divine principle of divine science. Deductions from material hypotheses are not scientific. They differ from real science because they are not based on the divine law. Science shows that material, conflicting mortal opinions and beliefs emit the effects of error at all times. But this atmosphere of mortal mind cannot be destructive to morals and health when it is opposed promptly and persistently by Christian science. Truth and love antidote this mental miasma and thus invigorate and sustain existence. Unnecessary knowledge gained from the five senses is only temporal the conception of mortal mind, the offspring of sense, not of soul, spirit, and symbolizes all that is evil and perishable. Natural science, as it is commonly called, is not really natural nor scientific because it is deduced from the evidence of the material senses. The ancient Christians were healers. Why has this element of Christianity been lost? Because our systems of religion are governed more or less by our systems of medicine. The first idolatry was faith in matter. The schools have rendered faith in drugs the fashion rather than faith in deity. By trusting matter to destroy its own discord, health and harmony have been sacrificed. Such systems are barren of the vitality of spiritual power, by which material sense is made the servant of science, and religion becomes Christ-like. Mortal mind is ignorant of self, or it could never be self-deceived. If mortal mind knew how to be better, it would be better. Since it must believe in something beside itself, it enthrones matter as deity. The human mind has been an idolater from the beginning, having other gods and believing in more than the one mind. As mortals do not comprehend even mortal existence, how ignorant must they be of the all-knowing mind and of his creations. Here you may see how so-called material sense creates its own forms of thought 
gives them material names, and then worships and fears them. With pagan blindness, it attributes to some material god or medicine an ability beyond itself. The beliefs of the human mind rob and enslave it, and then impute this result to another elusive personification named Satan. The Mohammedan believes in a pilgrimage to Mecca for the salvation of his soul. The popular doctor believes in his prescription. And the pharmacist believes in the power of his drugs to save a man's life. The Mohammedan's belief is a religious delusion. The doctors and pharmacists is a medical mistake. In a world of sin and sensuality, hastening to a greater development of power, it is wise earnestly to consider whether it is the human mind or the divine mind which is influencing one. What the prophets of Jehovah did, the worshippers of Baal failed to do. Yet artifice and delusion claimed that they could equal the work of wisdom. When mortal man blends his thoughts of existence with the spiritual and works only as God works, he will no longer grope in the dark and cling to earth because he has not tasted heaven. Carnal beliefs defraud us. They make man an involuntary hypocrite, producing evil when he would create good, forming deformity when he would outline grace and beauty, injuring those whom he would bless. He becomes a general miscreator who believes that he is a semi-god. His touch turns hope to dust, the dust we all have trod. He might say in Bible language, the good that I would, I do not but the evil which I would not, that I do. You command the situation if you understand that mortal existence is a state of self-deception and not the truth of being. Mortal mind is constantly producing on mortal body the results of false opinions, and it will continue to do so until mortal error is deprived of its imaginary powers by truth, which sweeps away the gossamer web of mortal illusion. When false human beliefs learn even a little of their own falsity, they begin to disappear. A knowledge of error and of its operations must precede the understanding of truth, which destroys error until the entire mortal material error finally disappears and the eternal verity man created by and of spirit is understood and recognized as the true likeness of his maker let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world
Let's now sing hymn number 253. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith, and breathed in raptured song, with love perfumed. Hymn number 253.
That you love me Is there anything more to be said If you ask your father for bread Will he give you a stone It's my faithlessness that stings could finish with that, <laughs> but let's now sing hymn number 18. Be firm and be faithful, desert not the right. The brave become bolder, the darker the night. Then up and be doing, though cowards may fail, thy duty pursuing, dare all and prevail. Hymn number 18.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, no substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the word knoweth not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>